In this module, we're going to look at how we can predict which compound has the greater or the, the lesser lattice energy by, by looking at what ions make up that compound, ionic compound. We're also going to look at something called dipole moment and what percent ionic character is and how to calculate percent ionic character. So let's start with this. The general principle, the rule is that the smaller the ions are and the greater their charge is, the, the greater the lattice energy. And when we say greater, for in, in this picture they're just numbers, but we know that these are all, if we calculated the lattice energies, these would be negative numbers. The more, when I say greater, I mean more negative. And so if we compare these three ionic compounds, lithium iodide, sodium iodide, and potassium iodide, the iodide is staying the same. What's changing is the cation, lithium, sodium, and potassium. They get, gra you get bigger as you go from left to right. The smaller, okay, so first of all, because the iodide stays the same, the distance between the center of the lithium atom and the iodine atom is, um, is only going to change due to the size of the lithium to the sodium to the potassium. So um, this put down here, by the way, is Coulomb's law. And it tells you that force between two charged particles is equal to the charge on each of those particles divided by the distance between them squared. And so if we look at these numbers, the force gets smaller as the size, the distance between them, gets bigger. Because I, this 2.20 is the radius of the iodide atom, the 0.76 is the radius of the lithium, 1.02 sodium, and so forth. So as the denominator gets bigger, the value gets smaller. The smaller the force of attraction, the lower the lattice energy. Lithium, okay, lithium iodide has the shortest distance between the two atoms, same charges in all of these, so it has the lowest lattice energy. Now here, what's changing is the char are the charges. Lithium's plus one, four is minus one. Magnesium's plus two, oxide's negative two. Scandium's plus three, and nitride's negative three. So the top is getting bigger. And the bigger it is, the more negative the, f the, the force of attraction is. That means the more attractive the, the, the forces are, and the greater the lattice energy. So the kind of questions that you're typically asked about this, or you're given you know, three or four different ionic compounds, and you're asked to arrange them in order of increasing um, lattice energy or maybe decreasing lattice energy. And that's how you look at size and charge. Next, dipole moment. So first of all, the symbol for a dipole moment is a Greek letter mu, and the units that we commonly use are called debye's. Symbol is a capital D. This right here is the formula for calculating the dipole moment, and it's just equal to the charge on the separate. Okay, so first of all, what's going on here? When we're talking about a dipole moment, we're talking about a separation of charge. And the magnitude of that charge is going to be the same. It's just going to be there's going to be a positive end and a negative end. <clears throat> so imagine you know, like a hydrogen chloride. What we're talking about with this dipole moment here is that hydrogen's electronegativity is 2.1, chlorine's 3.0. Chlorine's more electronegative, so that means there's going to be a little bit of a negative charge down here and a little bit of a positive charge on the hydrogen. Now this charge, this is what we're talking about. The size of the charge is the same. What's different is this is positive and this is negative. And that's what Q is. Whatever size this charge is, and we're going to calculate it in a minute. Whatever the size of this charge is, is Q. And R, it's just a distance from the, the center of this nucleus to the center of this nucleus there to there. Now, typically charges are in coulombs. Q is going to be coulombs mostly. R, the distance is going to be in meters. So when we calculate the dipole moment, we're going to get these coulomb meters, weird units. This is the conversion between Debye's and coulomb meters. Memorize it. Memorize this equation too. And down here is just a table, a real small table of some dipole moments, and also the distance between the centers of the nuclei, the bond lengths for the hydrogen halides. 
greatest dipole moment to the smallest dipole moment. So one of the useful things about knowing um, the measured dipole moment, going back here for a second, these are dip these dipole moments here were measured experimentally. That's where we got those numbers from. So if we know that number, we can calculate how big the, the partial charges are in that molecule, that, that delta plus and that delta minus. For example, in hydrogen chloride, and we're talking about gaseous species here, because once you put it in water, then stuff gets a little more complicated. So going back, this number here, 1.0 Debye's, this is the dipole moment for hydrogen chloride, and we're going to need the bond length too, 1.27 angstroms. So we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to change the dipole moment from units of Debye's to Coulomb meters with this conversion, and we get this number here. Next, to calculate the magnitude of those charges, how big are the char are charges that are separated out in this molecule, we just rearrange the dipole moment equation, solve for Q. Here we know that we have the measured dipole moment now in Coulomb meters. Remember the, the bond length we saw in that table is 1.27 angstroms, and remember an angstrom is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 10th meters. If you haven't memorized that yet, definitely useful to do. Anyway, so now we know the charge, the size of the charge that's separated between the hydrogen and the chlorine, chlorine atoms in hydrogen chloride, about 2.84 times 10 to the minus 20th coulombs. Well, it doesn't really tell you much. It's a number, so what, right? But what we can do is we can compare that to the size of a charge on an electron. In other words, how many electrons is that charge separation? All we do is take the magnitude of the charge we just calculated and divide that by the charge on an electron which you've memorized or, or are going to put on your cards anyway and this is the charge on one electron the the the, the amount of that charge is just 0.177 so we say that the the separation of charge or the size of the charge is 0.177 electrons all right so now percent ionic character what percent ionic character does is it gives us a measure of, of how separated the charges in a bond are. Uh, the greater the, this degree of separation or the greater the percent ionic character, the closer that bond is to being truly ionic. A truly ionic bond would be one where the charges are absolutely separated. So <clears throat> the formula, which you should memorize, is the measured dipole moment divided by the dipole moment that you would calculate if those charges were completely separated times 100. So think about that for a minute. This guy up here, we have to do an experiment, so we're going to look it up in the table probably. This we're going to calculate. This is the dipole moment that molecule would have if that electron were entirely removed from the less electronegative atom and entirely on the more electronegative atom. That's what this dipole moment would be. So let's do this. Let's do this for hydrogen bromide, the gas. So calculate the dipole moment that this molecule would have if that electron was entirely removed from the hydrogen atom and just sitting over there by itself on the bromine atom, not shared at all. Well, the size of the charge, the Q, this is Q, would be the charge on an electron. It would be this positive charge on the hydrogen atom, this negative charge on the bromine atom. And this right here, remember from that, that table, this, I just went back and I looked up in the table and I saw that the bond length in hydrogen bromide is 1.41 angstroms. So it's this 1.41 times 10 to the minus 10th meters. So multiplying this out, we get this many Coulomb meters. And now we're going to convert that back to Debye's because, remember, we're going to take the measure dipole moment, which is in Debye's, and divide it, <laughs> divide it by this guy. Anyway... So all we do is use that conversion factor that I showed you and asked you to memorize, and we get 6.77 divides calculated. In other words, this is what the dipole moment in hydrogen bromine would be if that electron were entirely removed from the hydrogen atom and sitting over there by itself on the bromine atom. Now, the real dipole moment is much less. It's 0.82 divides. So we divide these, multiply by 100, and we see that the ionic character is only 12% in gaseous hydrogen bromide. 